Uh, so, uh, hello all. Uh, first of all, I'll introduce myself. My name is Nareesh Kumar Rana. Uh, I work as an associate principal engineer with Nagaro. Uh, my uh, focus areas are embedded systems, uh, Internet of Things, and robotics. And uh, so, if you see today's topic, uh, it is basically linked to uh, this. Uh, two of these areas is embedded systems and uh, IoT. Uh, so we basically will be uh, trying to touch like how bare metal can be uh, 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 programmed uh, remotely. So which we usually call as uh, over the air firmware update. Uh, so we'll just look at like individual uh, you know things like uh, so there's a lot of meaning uh, in uh, in the topic name itself. So I'll start with uh, what does bare metal basically mean. So uh, bare metal, uh, in general sense, when somebody is uh, from electronic fraternity is discussing, so they generally mean that any application uh, which is basically trying to you know, access uh, the silicon chip directly. And uh, when we are saying directly, means there are no abstract layers in between. For example, if you are working on uh, a very high-end applications, which are uh, like say .NET applications, those. So there is usually a OS layer which uh, generally abstracts uh, how the interactions are done with you know, hardware. But when it comes to bare metal, so mostly most of the internals are accessible to the programmer or developer. Uh, so that's generally what bare metal is. And uh, uh, the second part of our topic is over the air update. Uh, so over the air, generally here, it means that we will be replacing the software which is uh, presently uh, residing in the microcontroller or the microprocessors, which, which is basically uh, the part of our embedded system product. Uh, and uh, so why do we basically need OTA? Uh, so in general sense, if we see, uh, the embedded systems, if they are deployed at a very, uh, you know, at a certain locations which are very uh, difficult to access, or uh, even if they are like power constrained systems, or if they are distributed across a wider areas, so uh, in very large quantities. So, in such uh, situations, it is very difficult. Uh, for somebody to you know individually go to each and every device and then program it with a new newer uh, release. Uh, so third point, if we see rapid software lifecycle, so this usually uh, is when we discover any bug or anything and then we fix that. And uh, and if the spread of that product is like too wider, it is in, it's not practical that uh, to deploy that newer version of uh, firmware over those devices in a very uh, short span of time. So in all such scenarios, uh, basically OTA comes in very, very handy. And when we talk about uh, Internet of Things, so these are all general characteristics which a, uh, a device which is, uh, you know, which can or, or a use case which is part of IoT can always be categorized. So they generally have all those challenges. So whether very less accessibility, a very low power, you know, memory constraints. So, so those are all general uh, characteristics which a IoT device will have. So this starts making more sense in such systems. Um, so once we uh, are you know, aware of uh, what uh, benefits are of this OTA and why do we need this OTA, uh, I'll just you know walk through like what generally is happening. Uh, until now when we are not using OTA. So in general uh, system, if somebody is uh, basically so uh, an embedded developer, he has a development machine which is depicted in this uh, slide. Uh, so I have not, uh, uh, slides are like just for our reference, so they're not very uh, like too, too much images and I, I have avoided so that we can have more uh, in, uh, interactive sort of so uh, the developer basically he has his machine where he uses ID to uh, uh, build his code 
uh, have the binary ready so he uses a debugger and he basically flashes to the microcontroller port so that's the general uh, method by using which uh, the programming of the embedded boards are done at present and in that so uh, obviously there is a uh, so so this technique uh, is evolved and uh, so microcontrollers they have started supporting with what they call a system bootloader uh, and this bootloader helps to flash the uh, generated binary uh, using general you know, converted cable which i have written here so here only thing is the user will have to make sure that he selects the right mode uh, because system bootloader decides whether it has to you know, either allow programming or jump for the execution of that programming so the, so uh, so these are some of the methods which presently users are using it for flashing the firmware so when it comes to ota so necessarily if we look at the high level block diagram uh, or very generic block diagram it looks you know, something like this so where you where we have a server which holds the binary uh, there is a bridge device which helps to uh you know, connect the server to the microcontroller based device so this microcontroller device obviously is a, uh, as expected it is a very constrained device uh, on uh, processing power as well as the memory uh, yeah so and uh, uh, so once a newer binary is available uh, to uh, to you know uh, which uh, either addresses a certain uh, problem or it either is something which we we have we want to deploy it to the microcontroller so that binary is basically uploaded to server and uh, so then there is a necessary uh, infrastructure uh, which uh, or infrastructure as well as intelligence which uh, pushes that binary to the microcontroller device so if you see the overall process is uh, where uh, the binary is broken down into smaller discrete packets and that packets are passed over the bridge device uh, to the microcontroller uh, in the microcontroller uh, when we see so there are like different uh, areas which is user flash area where generally the application resides and then there is a system bootloader block which i have depicted so Uh, and then other than that they, uh, what i have also shown is a custom bootloader so in the subsequent uh, slides we will uh, basically see uh, how uh, this uh, custom bootloader basically plays a major role uh, in this overall ota process so it also uh, it holds some part of the process not the complete one because there are certain things which are implemented on, on the server side uh, so some, uh, some implementations on the bridge device and some obviously as part of custom bootloader so uh, with the context what we just discussed on ota so if we see generally what, what sort of challenges we would be having uh, when somebody is trying to uh, add ota uh, to their uh, system so uh, as we already discussed that it is uh, for microcontroller based systems so generally so uh, because it's for uh, microcontroller based systems so uh, generally we will have a uh, so memory is usually constrained uh, so, so so for ota so memory is usually is like uh, first challenge uh, because the uh, the ram is not available in uh, in lot of uh, the quantities usually how it is available on uh, the general uh, machines uh, which are used for high level programming uh, so here we will have to manage all the packets uh diligently so that the application uh, the newer application is flashed uh, uh without any errors so while while that is being done even the existing application has to be taken care uh, because when um, so it it all depends on the design decisions too uh, because somebody uh, might take a very conscious decision that uh, you know they will keep two copies of a application so that if one application is corrupted there is always a fallback uh, copy uh, or there might be three copies too if somebody has like uh, understanding that when the number of copy increases so the size available to each copy decreases 
so um, and uh, which copy is uh, is actually a right copy is maintained some, some so as part of design somebody maintains a table of content too so that content points to the right application uh, every time the system is resetted so whenever there is a system or the microcontroller device is a reset uh, it first loads the system bootloader and the system bootloader in turn invokes the custom bootloader which we already saw in our uh, previous slide in the block diagram so this custom bootloader uh, though we have depicted here as a uh, blank uh, box but this is all left to the designer that how he wants to basically you know uh, implement this piece so as i mentioned that there could be uh, multiple applications uh, there could be uh, the way in which the pointers can be in as part of this block which can point to the right application uh, which presently needs to be executed so uh, so as part of memory those 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 are some of the challenges which uh, somebody who is trying to do some hands on uh, on ota uh, it can look for um second challenge which we have discussed is obviously communication so uh, when it comes to communication uh, we see that the, the connection is right from the server all the way to the uh, microcontroller which is uh, anyway say constraint device so so there are multiple uh, points at which the packet basically uh, has to traverse so all these multiple points as you see so at the server level the packets are to be made you know discrete uh, and uh, in between the bridge device and the custom bootloader again so there has to be a handshake uh, and a understanding of uh, how the packets will be again reassembled so if you see so at the server it uh, when the packetization is happening uh, so there is disassembling of the complete user application binary Uh, which again gets assembled on the microcontroller with the help of the custom bootloader so now this functionality which i just mentioned that again could be you know somebody's design decision that they could uh, basically do this assembling and disassembling at the bridge device too and they can you know pass that as a single copy uh, to so it all depends upon how uh the designer foresees or how the infrastructure is available to him uh with him actually so the communication part is basically those so just have to uh, uh we have to make sure that uh the basic uh, power speed those are maintained because th there could be a hit on how much time basically it takes to uh, download a, a binary to the microcontroller device so and the security uh, third aspect so there, there is there is subsequent slide we will discuss more on security so when we want to touch uh, security in ota like what basically we are trying to uh, achieve here and how we can achieve that uh, what i'll i'll try to uh, get more uh, a bit deeper into a custom bootloader uh, the block which we have shown here uh, like what generally it, uh, the functionality what that uh, custom bootloader uh, provides to the uh, this ota use case so if we see obviously uh, the custom bootloader is residing as part of user space so that necessarily means that now we are getting lesser space uh, in the flash as we would have without this custom bootloader so so there is a gen, so obviously there is a trade off uh, when we are trying to achieve one feature uh, so the designer has to take a conscious call whether he wants uh, this feature uh, and this is the trade off he would be uh, you know taking when he does something like this on the system um obviously it uh, it runs every time as it is mentioned every time there is a reset so the system bootloader runs custom bootloader also runs so uh, the custom bootloader basically does the basic functionality of making sure the right application is running um and uh, it will also make sure that if if a newer application has to be flashed how the overall mechanism would be so that is also there uh, which uh, i mentioned is part of my bullet 3 uh so 
if we go to uh, so the, this slide basically just tells like what what would be a general custom bootloader flow. So as I just referred from from the recent system bootloader runs, it branches to a custom bootloader. Uh, the custom bootloader basically decides that which is you know, the right application or the good application at that time, and then it uh, branches to the right application. And uh, uh, now there could be uh, so if if you see there is smaller uh, I have also mentioned that there could be uh, a very uh, and there could be alternative to this that custom bootloader can be implemented as part of application itself. So we don't need this custom bootloader itself. So the application will be having components of what bootloader is presently achieving, but then. So if we see block voice, that necessarily means we'll be replicating the custom bootloader components in as many application copies which we are maintaining on that. So that in a way uh, would be a you know, design decision that do we want to take a hit on the flash because now we are replicating uh, the code in different applications. Uh, so this depicts like how uh, we are trying to, you know, once the packets are there at the server level, so this is like very straightforward process where every time a packet is received, uh, it is immediately flashed or transferred to the device flash without uh, without caching. So caching necessarily means that we are basically storing the packet uh, in SRAM to a certain extent, and once we once that boundary is hit, we basically uh, you know stop taking the packets, and at the same time we flash uh, it to the device flash and then we vacate the RAM space again we are ready to take up new packets similarly in case of uh, so the slide 12 just depicts the same firmware update process but now here uh, we have introduced like we can now because if RAM is going to be a constraint so we can basically compress the binaries uh, so the two additional thing which has shown up here is like yeah we are compressing and uh, or we are like this binary is like not so there is another route. Uh, so every time a packet is arriving and once that region is full, it basically flashes to the device flash which we just discussed. Uh, same way if here if you see uh, so the only difference here uh, between the process 2 and process 3 is uh, in process 2 it is more packet like once the packet uh, size is full it flashes to the device in this process it is like not packet but it's application so once the complete application is uh, downloaded it flashes to the device uh, but as we can see now uh, again this is all design decisions only because once you, we are downloading complete applications to the RAM, that necessarily means we need more RAM. That also means that now if you are maintaining multiple copies, so uh, part of RAM uh, will have to keep free for just managing this function. So uh, so these are all uh, up to the designer, like how, so when he is trying to implement uh, this firmware update process, so these are like some of the parameters which he can consider uh, what all infrastructure is available on the device which is going to implement this uh, what is the device which will be basically acting as a bridge between the server and um, this microcontroller device so that um, maybe we can refer to that generally as let's say the radio device uh, which will help to this connectivity so if that radio how uh, how, how how much capable that device is it also depends uh, you know that uh, design wise it will also depend on that device like how much uh, uh, process or the design load that device can share for this overall OTA process um, and finally as I was sharing uh, like in, in the last slide we uh, did touch on the challenges uh, here, like what all are the OT challenges? Security was definitely uh, one of them, uh, and it's a major challenge if we see with respect to uh, uh, IoT related uh, designs. So, uh, in security, 
generally we we would want our uh, you know the packets which are uh, come uh, from the server all the way to microcontroller device uh, they should not be uh, the others should not have access to those packets so uh, when we are saying access to even so even if they uh, happen to access them it should it should rather not make any sense to them or they should not be able to abstract any uh, confidential information which we are trying to you know pass in those packets so which generally can be achieved with encryption so uh, generally microcontroller devices uh, they uh, they support aes 128 or aes 256 encryption um so which which necessarily encrypts the packet uh, right from when it starts from the server uh, all the way to the microcontroller device so this custom bootloader uh, basically ha- can have that functionality to uh, decrypt the packet which are encrypted with any of such uh, cryptographic methods uh, and now most of the microcontroller devices too have started at uh, you know hardware level itself they have started uh, supporting such uh, uh, aes uh, aes hardware uh, in uh, decryption and encryption um so the second bullet is uh, to detect whether there is any you know, corruption which has happened in the packet when it started from server to uh, the device so this can be detected by uh, using uh, generally uh, what is used is hashing so again the same thing uh, for hashing too so uh, there are infrastructures which are provided um now the microcontrollers are coming with uh, hashing hardware so Uh, like sha2 256 um uh, so there are hash digest which are um, <coughs> generated by uh, the server and the client have to uh, so client this necessarily means our microcontroller device or the bridge device as depending on how design process we have kept for update so can verify whether this uh, digest uh, from the digest it can verify whether any particular bit uh, in the packet is disturbed or you know something like this uh, so <clears throat> based on based on that it can decide whether to you know consider that packet or ignore that packet or uh, ignore a complete application so th- th- so these are some of the methods by which uh, corruption in the packet can be detected and now uh, for the third point where uh, we so this is also very crucial that we uh, have to make sure that uh, when the microcontroller gets a new firmware uh, the firmware has come from a trusted source and uh, somebody has not bypassed you know, the the links in between and have tried to uh, deploy a malicious application uh, which would eventually uh, put a threat to the complete uh, network Uh, or other devices alongside um, so general method what uh, can be used here is like using um, the asymmetric keys which are uh, the primary and the secondary key uh, which usually are used in a client server communication method where uh, uh, the, the server holds the primary key uh, and so the packet can be basically encrypted using that and the, on the other side uh, the packet can be decrypted and the, so so that will just make sure that yeah it's a uh, the handshake which happens uh, before the transfer of this packet starts so that will make sure that uh, the packets have come from a trusted source so if we see uh, as part of this ota update we have in general we have covered which 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 somebody would be considering when he uh, he or she is trying to implement this uh, on on his uh, use case or, or with his system so we 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 uh, did this here uh, you know with the uh, A 32-bit STM uh, microcontroller. Where, uh, if if I see, 
so i'll just put up that so if you see uh, so something like this we have uh, we did here so where the bridge device were much more capable so it could run almost uh, it could run uh, a python uh, on it so the server uh, was having a proper you know, uh, handshake with this bridge device uh, which was considering all the security aspect which which we just uh, you know, discussed on uh, 14 slide number 14 uh, so this python application basically uh, uh, can talk to uh, the custom bootloader uh, and so the custom bootloader have uh, general uh, you know, methods or mechanism by which it can um, just make sure that right application is you know, coming to it and it is flashing uh, so while somebody is doing this uh, obviously we need to take care of uh, in intro vector tables because those are something uh, somebody might you know, get trouble so the overall entire process might be through application might be getting flashed you know very well but still we will see that it is not booting up or so these are some of the areas which a developer can or designer can cover most of uh, the, the details which i had to share uh, for uh, the bare metal otf firmware update i hope you guys uh, have found this exciting uh, and you will uh, try to uh, use it as per your function functions if you are designer programmer or uh, or with any other functions in your company available or there online courses now due to this corona situation if you are confined to your home so you, uh, on um, Uh, some of the uh, this uh, the portals I've seen there are good courses which you can basically enroll. Um, if you go through a couple of those courses, you get good insight on this topic. Uh, and definitely for hands-on is like must when it comes to embedded systems. So you should order a couple of kits for you that gives you a proper insight into those challenges. Uh, what generally a designer faces. Uh, so there is one more question: How bridge device? uses command application so uh, let me guess uh, so you are saying the bridge device uh, so basically this command application uh, on one hand it will implement a protocol so that uh, the micro uh, the custom bootloader can understand that the how the packets are coming and how it has to treat those packets uh, can you present a live demo yeah this should be uh, i it will be good idea uh, given the time constraint of 30 minutes uh, i think uh, we could cover this much but definitely next time we would try to give a live demo i have raspi arduino stm uh, will i be able to create a ota firmware uh, you should be because what i am seeing here is raspi so this raspi can act as a radio device uh and this stm32 f664 so there are a lot of variants of stm32 so i think what we we could uh, we did with stm32 f103 i think so this i am not really uh, sure on how much ram is available with f664 but then stm32 variants mostly uh, they have system bootloader in it so uh, and then they also allow the vector table to be placed uh, in a proper you know in a custom this so you should be able to this so raspberry necessarily will act as a radio device for you and uh, you should be able to do that how can we contact you in future for reference you can reach to me at naresh.rana@gmail.com 